Hi, guys. Oh, there's Nancy. Hi. <laughs> happy Sunday. Happy hashtag Super Sunday. Really don't didn't know Super where to go with Sunday. that one. Super Sunday, Sunday fun day. Sunday fun day. Um, so we're coming to you live, giving you guys a little bit of a pep talk for obviously ourselves, but all for you guys, um, you know, to really move forward into the week ahead and beyond to keep pushing forward in a positive way. So just wanted to say hi to Farzi and Dana. Hi, Sue. We just saw you. Good to see you again. Um, I was on Debbie. Oh, you're adorable, Dana. Stop it. Hi, Betsy. So what we wanted to talk about tonight was being organized. And everyone, you know, obviously talks about this, like being organized. How do I be organized? What's the importance of being organized? Hi, Stephen. Hi, Jen. Great to see everybody on here. So type Y or yes in the chat box if you have ever or currently struggle with being organized in your life, in your business, both, just so we know who we're talking to. On the replay, obviously, we can come back and come back to the, the comments. But acknowledge where you are. How many people have ever struggled with organization or still struggle with organization? Because what we're going to do, like we just recorded a podcast, actually. It's going to be out tomorrow, so look for it. And we're, we're, we talked about some things uh, that you can do. So hi, Maria. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Dana. Sharon. Betsy says yes. So why or yes in the chat box or a number one? Debbie says yes. So, you know, being organized is very important. So I'm going to I'm gonna let Nancy start because I, for her, you know, things were a little bit different organization-wise because she went from – you know, working in a, in a Fortune 50, Fortune 500 uh, company to, you know, running her own business now. So, so, you know, obviously when someone says, you know, what is the, what's the importance of being organized? What would you, what would you say? The, why is it important to be organized? Yeah. I mean, I think it's so incredibly important to be organized because as an entrepreneur and really as anyone, you know, pretty much in any job that you have, there's so many things that you're thrown um, that are thrown your way, you know, outside elements, life, losing focus, being burnout, brain noise, roller coasters, you know, it, a lot with entrepreneurs, it's failures, right? Setbacks, things that you're faced with every day. So without organization, it's so incredibly hard to be efficient and to stay focused and to stay on track. So organization, and it could be as simple as having a routine or having a planner or having something to kind of keep you on track. Grounded. Um, yes, because that, that's kind of what happened with me. I mean, going from corporate life where I was just forced to have routines, right? I had to get up. I had to get a shower. I had to go to work. I had certain things that I had to do. And, of course, I had my own routines in there. But becoming an entrepreneur – the wheels can come off the track really quickly if you don't have a routine and it can make you feel overwhelmed. Um, it can make you feel like, what am I doing? Almost like swimming and, and you know, you got to get to the top of the air. Um, but when you start to feel that way, and that's why we're talking about it tonight, it's so incredibly important to have that organization. Absolutely. So guys, like or love the video, share this in your private team pages because I have found you know, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs, including myself, to be the highly, the most highly unorganized people in the world. Not, I mean, to no one's fault, but everyone is, is used to being in corporate America where you're given a schedule, where you clock in and you clock out. And now you're given this, this, this puzzle box of entrepreneurship with no direction. There's no cover of what the puzzle looks like. And you have all these puzzle pieces and you have to figure it out for yourself. Oh, she loves your top. She, uh, they're, they're, di they're, they're dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. There's, there's all kinds of dinosaurs. <laughs> so what you guys have to realize is that, you know, most people are unorganized and, and you know what people that have regular nine to fives, they're unorganized too. But what I can tell you is that, you know, now being a parent and, you know, most of my friends being parents, organization can be a challenge at times because it's not just you you're worrying about. You know, you got to worry about your getting your, your kid or your kids all organized. It, it's, it's like this symphony of chaos. So, you know, for me, 
the importance of being organized is simply just that. The more organized you are, the less, the less stressed you are, the less chaotic your life is, and the more, I mean, you can't ever really control life, but you actually are at the helm of how your day is. And for me, that's peace. You know, to have peace every single day, you know, for me, if I have to go somewhere or, you know, we're going down the shore for a week or whatever it is, I'm not going to pack the night before, the, the day before or the, the morning up. I'm going to pack the day before. I'm going to have the bags laid out by the door if I even want to take some bag out, bags out the night before to get them in the car. The more organized you are, the more that you can plan ahead. And obviously, there are going to be some things that come up that completely throw you off. But just remain grounded. Just say, okay, acknowledge what's going on, and then you just, you just move forward. You know? Yeah. And I think, again, like going back to just having a structure in place, you know, such as a routine or a place where you actually put down the things that you need to do. So like a planner, um, you at least have some foundations for yourself to go back to. Um, Because like Scott said, I mean, we know people um, who have multiple kids. I mean, my brother and my sister-in-law have three kids now, uh, which I'm so excited about. Um, But, you know, it's hot to juggle and kids are not always predictable. Um, So a lot of things are thrown your way. And, you know, even if you don't have kids, even if you just have, you know, a regular day, there are a lot of things that come up, you know, even being like traffic and whatever. Yeah. People not showing up for certain things, having to reschedule, having to be resilient and adaptable to, you know, bob and weave with the punches. Um, But it's important to have those foundations of organization to get you back on track. You know, the, the one the one big thing that I've learned is that a lot of people are really um, – we, we were listening to it in a podcast on the way home, and Mel Robbins says that if you could project over a loudspeaker the thoughts that go through our heads, every single one of us would be institutionalized. <laughs> and it's so true. We talk such junk in our heads – Oh, I'm so like, I'm sorry. We're, we're not going to be perfect. You know, organization is all, you, there's no mastering anything. You're, you're never going to master organization. And like, I mean, I'm a very organized person, but I have my moments where I'm disorganized, where I forget phone calls or I forget this, or I forget that it's, I'm, it's called being human, but it happens less often now because I'm, in charge of my day and how it goes. Yeah. And one thing I thought about, so I used to think it was really quirky because I didn't ever match my socks. And it's like, why am I bringing this up? Um, But it kind of goes back to this quote that we talk about in our podcast. And it's the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Right. So I think, you know, when I first met Scott, I was like, Oh, I'm such a clumsy person. And oh, I'm usually late and I'm this and I'm that. And my socks don't match. And it's like, you know, I'm a hot mess. (laughs) Like I need to like get my shit together. So I actually started making my bed and I started matching my socks and it was almost like a mental thing. Like when I matched my socks, it kind of set my day up for success. And I knew I like kind of started there with having my life together. Um, And it kind of went from there and I just started to not accept the little things that I was accepting and it kind of helped, you know, kind of shape my day. So even little things like that. And I just, I say it's just something for me that, you know, kind of was changing, but you know, the way that you do one, thing is the way you do everything so. yeah and, and debbie says i'm trying to recognize my life to make a life for myself now that my daughter has moved back home after graduating everything was about her um and i'm learning how to let go and focus on me what advice can you add that's great so trying to organize your life to for back to yourself and daughters yeah so i mean focusing on yourself <laughs> Man, that's a routine in itself, and I think somewhere in that weekly routine that you put together, you should definitely have you time. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, Scott had mentioned on the podcast, there's something called, what was it, the 90? So Robin Sharma has something called the 90-90 rule, which basically means you do 90 minutes of intense work, like 90 minutes, like no cell phone, cell phone is off. Um, computer, like whatever it's down, you're doing work for 90 straight minutes, no distractions, no stopping. 
and then you take a 90 minute break. You take an hour and a half, an, an hour and a half break where you go to the gym, you make some breakfast, you go take a walk, you do a meditation, you completely reset yourself and you come back to it. So hi, Melissa. So in, in regards to what Debbie said, you know, it, it's, it can be a transition because when you, you know, I, I remember because I went, you know, I moved out when I was 18, I went away to college and then I came back home to help with our family's business a year and a half later and moved back home. And that was, it's a transition obviously for any parent because you kind of get used to only worrying about you and taking care of you. And then the natural maternal and paternal instinct when your child comes home is okay. It's not about me anymore. I'm putting myself back on the back burner and I'm going to take care of my kid. And here's the thing, you know, your daughter just graduated. She's back home. She's a woman now. She's not a little girl. You know, she knows how to take care of herself. Any child that can get through the four years of college and, and make it out alive like we all have are, are efficient and self-sufficient enough to take care of themselves. But Debbie, you hear me talk about this all the time. If you put yourself last, you're putting everybody else last with you. When you put yourself first, you put everybody else first with you. So remember, your health, your mental state, your physical state, your emotional state has to be all the way up here for you. Because the more that you show up the way that you want to, you show up that way for everybody else. It's true. So there's something else that I wanted to touch on, and this goes for all the parents out there and about being organized. So here's a perfect example. Uh, it was about two weeks ago. Taylor has swim right now, and he's, he, he has swim every Wednesday from 6 to 6.30 p.m., and he's in camp, and he has camp. You're welcome, Debbie. He has camp from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., but... Uh, for like three weeks, he had these double swim lessons where he had swim from 3.30 to 4 and then 6 to 6.30. So it so happened that it fell on a day where I had him, Wednesday, Wednesday night. So I had to rearrange my day. I had to replan my day because he goes to camp downtown and his swim is all the way out in the burbs. So not only did I have to plan for driving time because he had to be at swim by three o'clock. That meant I had to pick him up at camp by 2.15 to give myself about 30 minutes to get to the burbs, to get him changed, ready for swim from three to 3.30, get him home in time to get him changed, relaxed, get him dinner, get him back in the car, and then drive him back for evening swim again. So I literally, like my schedule, instead of having appointments written down, I actually planned out, you know, what time do I have to leave my house to get Taylor? You know, what time do I want to be there? What time do I want to get to swim? What time do I want to be back here? What time am I going to get him dinner? So it, it's all this, it, it's, it's perfectly orchestrated if you write it down and you orchestrate it. So if you're flying by the seat of your pants, you're going to just fly by the seat. And you're, you're just, it's just going to... Like even talking about all of that to the normal person would probably give them anxiety. Oh my God, I have to do all that. And no, it, it doesn't give me anxiety because now I know how to schedule my day in my life, which is the same way that I schedule my business. Because again, like Nancy said, our quote that we had in the podcast was the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. If you do everything you know, with not with, with with a negative attitude, or not wanting to do it, or forcing yourself to do it, or chaos, or whatever it is, that's how everything in your life is going to be. It's so true, and and I think it's a it's very important. And we actually talk a, about a lot of good stuff in the podcast, so definitely check it out whenever we uh, we send that out. Um, but it's so incredibly important. I thought about it like this: mo my Monday, so tomorrow, for example is so packed, right? I have like phone calls set up. I have, you know, a few things that I got to take care of, things I've got to look over. Um, plus we're going to the beach. So I've got to run to the beach, set up my computer, get everything going, you know, map out this time. And I'm, I'm literally just 
in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, so I'm already overwhelmed. But tonight, I actually, before we started doing the podcast, I thought about it and I'm like, I am so incredibly grateful and blessed that I actually have stuff to do, (laughs) you know? I've actually got businesses and things to work on and to focus on, and guess what? It's a puzzle piece, right? I can kind of move things around as needed. And if I can't do it during this time, then I reschedule it to a different time. So I totally shifted my mindset and I was like, what are you so stressed about? You should be so incredibly grateful. So I turned that stress into a positive and now I'm kind of excited to get a big old coffee, cleanse tomorrow and start my awesome day because I've got a jam packed day full of fun stuff, you know, that could uncover into great business opportunities. So that's another way to kind of handle some some stress. Um, and I'm sticking to my routine. You know, I've, I've got everything in my calendar. I've got everything written down of what I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, and I'm still, you know, on track. And the, the one piece of advice that, that we can give you guys before we sign off is that if you ever feel like you've mastered something, if you've ever, if you ever feel like, you know, there's an exact science and key to organization, you're never going to figure it out because as you grow, as your businesses grow, as your mindset grows, as your life grows and everything changes, you have to adapt and change with it. So it's going to require a different type of organization. You know, we're going down the shore for five days with Taylor and, you know, obviously I, my week looks completely different because it's going to be in between phone calls back and forth. It's, it's the beach. It's the amusement park, it's dinner, it's lunch, it's running around. But you know what? I've been prepared for it for the last week. I already have everything scheduled and planned out, so it's stress-free, it's organized, and most importantly, it's fun. Everything in life is fun if you want it to be, whether it's working for someone or working for yourself. So I can tell you, When you're so organized and you're on top of everything that you're doing, everything becomes easier. Everything everything becomes more manageable and fun because it is. Because you're working on your business instead of working in your business. And there's a huge difference. And the same thing is you're working on your life instead of working within your life. You don't want any of that. You don't want your job or your business to consume you. You don't want your life to consume you. You want to be in the most control you can be, which is the present time, not focusing on the past, not focusing on the future, just focusing on right now. So true. And, you know, if anyone is super stressed or has a lot of anxiety, um, you know, we're all human, you know, and our podcast is called Entrepreneurs in the Trenches. So I highly recommend check out um, our podcast, but also check out uh, Mel Robbins. She is amazing with dealing with anxiety and just, you know, kind of getting control of your situation. Um, and then you'll hear us in the podcast talk about some tips on when you have a lot of ideas and a lot of things going around and how you can really focus to that. So a couple awesome tips we're going to share in the podcast. Yeah. So guys, you know, if you haven't done already, please like, or love the video, share this in your private groups, whether it's a team group or private group or your own page, because what I can share with you is that a lot of the people that I do speak to a lot of their stress and their anxiety comes from not feeling organized. And even though we just dropped a couple little tips, they will help people. The more organized you become, like getting a day planner or whatever the case may be, the the littlest change that you guys make in the right direction towards the way that you want to run your business and run your life, the better you're going to feel about everything. So guys, we hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Stay tuned tomorrow as we drop episode six of Entrepreneurs in the Trenches, all about being organized. Um, we're going to go through, you know, obviously in that more in-depth stuff. So enjoy the rest of your Sundays, and we will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.